so not just with your walks but w- with whatever you're doing with your dog i think it's really important that you that you think to yourself how can i make this how can i try and solve this problem the easiest way you know Hello, my bunny vans, and welcome to episode 11 of the Superhero Dog Owner Show. We're into, I was going to say we're into double figures, but we're past double figures, past Alex, double figures. because 11 is more than 10. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, thanks to everyone who's um, left a, a, a nice review for us. Really appreciate that. People who have been giving us feedback and they've been sharing the, the podcast and uh, we're getting some nice feedback from right around the world, actually, Alex. Yeah, Are it's we been, really? It's been, it's been awesome to hear, yeah. So, um, you know, if you have any more hints and tips what you want us to do in the podcast, please let us know. But anyway, I'm here. I'm joined today by my good friend, Alex, the video guy. Hello. And uh, and we're here at on the cliff tops at Hendon again. The sun is shining. The weather's on the turn a little bit. We're, we're in autumn now, Alex. I can't believe we've still got a nice sunny day. I know. It will not be long before we're sitting with hats and scarves. It's definitely warm. And gloves on in here. But, no. um, a couple of weeks, max. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, we might take the podcast indoors then, who knows. Yes. Um, so today, Alex, I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, who is your favourite superhero? Oh, good question. For me, it's between either Batman uh-huh. or Iron Man. Because okay. I don't know if you know, but I quite like my gadgets and my technology and stuff. I had no Maybe it's obvious. So the whole thing of Iron Man it really appeals yeah. to all the gadgets He's and the gizmos. ultimate gadget guy, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, massively. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And anybody can be Iron Man, I guess. I guess anybody can be Batman too, can't that's they? That's true. Yes, that's that's the reason why I like Batman, because he's just a man. You know, He's just uh-huh. a, a guy who's a, become a, a vigilante and done things his own way. Cool. So that's good what one, I like good about one. And and do you um, who who else would you who who else would you look up to that maybe isn't a, a superhero in your life? You know, or, or you know, in hmm. in the world. Okay. Um, a real life superhero. Hmm. I I really like um that there's a guy on YouTube called Casey Neistat. All right, cool. And he's a vlogger, so yeah. he's just all about YouTube and documenting his life and. Mm-hmm. He he did a thing uh, about he started about a year ago where he did a, a film every day. So he just he vlogged his life and did a, he he made himself make a video every single day. Uh-huh. And it helps that his life is very um, it's very interesting. It's very different. It's not exactly a normal life. Yeah. But him sort of making the the commitment to 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 make a film every day. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I, I I look up to him. All right, cool. You know, so that would be inspiring to you. Definitely. Excellent. Definitely yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you must make a video every day too, surely. Close, close to that, certainly. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still far. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. A couple of good suggestions. There. I like those a lot. I, I think Superman. I would probably, for me, would be a, would would be probably one of my the maybe that was the one. Yeah, the original Christopher Reeve one. I think when I was growing up, I, I used to watch them a lot and enjoy them. I also used to like watching. Um, my real life superhero would probably be Bruce Lee when I was when I was younger. Right. You know, I think yeah. um, you're probably a little bit too young to remember Bruce Lee, Alex. Although you probably heard of him. Yes, heard of him. I don't think I've ever seen a full film. Oh, or anything. You're missing out, I'm missing my out. The big style, yeah. Mm. So um, the the big one that I used to watch was that the, the one that kind of launched him was this big Hollywood, um, uh, like a, a western movie, I suppose you could say, um, Enter the Dragon. Yeah. Mm. And there's a there's a scene in Enter the Dragon when when Bruce has been invited to a to a martial arts tournament on an island and he's traveling there and all the competitors are on the boat and one of the competitors is a bit of a wide boy he's a bit of a wise guy and uh he's kind of trying to goad bruce into 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 fighting with him you know Mm -hmm. but bruce is having none of it he's like way too cool all the time and so and the guy says to bruce what's your style my style yeah and bruce says you can call it the art of fighting without fighting the art of fighting without fighting you know and the guy's curiosity is peaked a little bit and he kind of says you know show me show me some of it you know and mm-hmm. and bruce says oh we can't do it here it's there's not enough room on the boat you know so we'll go to that island over there that island and so they say we'll take this own boat and we'll go to the island so the guy kind of okay. says okay we'll do that then and and, and, the, and the douchebag gets in the boat and bruce just kind of Pays the line out into the sea and just kind of leaves him bobbing there for, 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 the, for the journey to the island, you know? 
which yeah. perfectly demonstrates the art of fighting without fighting. Very clever. Yeah, see. really good, see? And um, because obviously, if you don't want to fight, you, which you shouldn't want to fight anyway, I suppose. But you know, if, if you can avoid a fight at all times, then you should do that, you know? And the kind of dog training lesson that I've got for you from that is, you know, if, if you're a dog owner and you, you know, you, you, you obviously you have to exercise your dog, you have to take him out to the park and stuff like that. Um, but if, if you're constantly going to the park and, and your, you know, your, your dog is always, maybe it's reacting to certain things in the park, maybe it's dogs, maybe it's, you know, pheasants or, or birds or, or so, you know, something, or maybe it's not even at the park, maybe it's on the way to the park, you know, maybe he always kicks off at a, at a neighbour's dog who, who barks at him through the fence and that kind of thing, and, you know, and, and no matter how many times you try, you, your dog always kicks off and then you always feel frustrated and, and, you know, and then you tell him off and then you feel a bit guilty and stuff, you know? So, so something that I, I like to promote is, take a little leaf out of Bruce Lee's thing which is you know the art of fighting without fighting why, why why would you bother going to these places and putting your dog through the you know you know your dog is going to react you know if your dog's reacted all of his life to a certain thing until you teach him something else then he's just going to react you know and if he does you're going to experience all of the like I say the, the negative emotions that come with you know and it's going to pee off isn't it you know what I mean it's yeah. gonna, and it's going to frustrate you and it's going to make you not want to walk your dog you know so so if you can and I believe that almost all dog owners can do this, you know. If you can, you should definitely try avoiding going to the place or passing by the thing that makes your dog kick off. Because it's, quite simply, it's the easiest way, <laughs> it's the easiest way to, way to do it, you know what I mean? I mean, like like Bruce on the boat, you know, he could have fought the guy, obviously, and he, he would have won. But the easiest thing for him to do was just put the guy in a boat and just let him bob along, along the edge, you know. And that was the easiest option. And I think as as pet dog owners... Because we want to take our dogs out and we want to, you know, we want to experience the great outdoors and we should want to do all those things. I think we 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 sometimes forget that the, the easy option is is sometimes just to to avoid the thing that uh, that that's making the dog kick off, you know, and, and yeah. it's upsetting the dog, and in turn, it's upsetting us. So, what what, what do you think about that? I think that would be good advice. Absolutely, it's uh, like what like what you said, what Bruce Lee did. He very cleverly got in and solved the problem before there even was one, really. Yeah. He jumped the gun and exactly, avoided yeah. it completely. Yeah, yeah. And you the good yeah, excellent excellent point, Alex. And you you know, you're you're the owner. You know, we're we're the smart ones really, you know what I mean? Dogs are smart, but we're you know, they haven't taken over the world like what humans have, have they? So, you know, technically we should be smarter than dogs. And so if we know in our mind that something's gonna happen, we're the ones who can put steps in place to ensure that it's not gonna happen, yeah. you know? Um, so that's something that I, that's something that I, I've been taught by my kind of dog training <laughs> mentors and stuff, and it's something that I put in place with my dog. Um, it's, it's Sydney, for example. Yeah, Sydney is a little bit. Uh, it can be a little bit sort of resource garden sometimes, like especially around food. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and it, he's a lot better now than he was. We'd be taking steps to, to to make him better, but. The easiest thing that that I found to do was just like not feed him in front of other dogs, you know what I mean? And 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 bingo, the problem solved. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Doesn't I, make much difference to him. He still gets his food. Yeah, for so. sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, and he'd probably enjoy his food even more, isn't yeah, he? Because exactly. he isn't having to go through the the stress of um, of you know feeling like he has to defend his food at all. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. So, so, so not just with your walks, but w w whatever you're doing with your dog, I think it's really important that you that you think to yourself, how can I make this? How can I try and solve this problem the easiest way? You know, if you another example could be, you know, if your dog was um, maybe if he was if he was barking at the window all of the time, and you know it was it was upsetting the neighbours, maybe you know when I mean? you were starting to get complaints and stuff like that. The easiest thing to do would be to either put the dog in a different room. Mm -hmm. where he can't look out the window uh, or kind of shut the curtains you know what I mean now I know there's people laughing you're laughing you're laughing you know but because <laughs> it but, just seems like well, so obvious well yeah it? yeah you know but, what I mean you but, know a lot of people wouldn't think to no, do that and, I, I probably wouldn't think to yeah, do that yeah yeah and I've been the same in the past you know but but just doing doing the easiest thing first and then once you've done the easiest thing then obviously you can take steps to to, to try and you know get your dog to move away from the window and stuff but you know trust me it, it's not impossible in fact it's quite easy i suppose to teach your dog to go to his bed you know you could teach him to do that with treats or, or, or you know many different ways you could teach him to go to his bed and lie in his bed but it's way easier to just shut the curtains <laughs> you know yeah. um for, for everybody involved um so so if you're having an, an issue with your dog 
whatever it might be. Yeah, the sensible thing to do would be to try and avoid the thing that's making him kick off. And it's also it's it's a responsible thing to do as well. I think, Alex. You know, you have to. You know, if 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 you head off to the park and, you know, you might have it in your mind. Oh, we're gonna have a great we're gonna have a great game with my dog. Um, but then you get there and you can see that there's a couple of dogs maybe off leash already you know what I mean and, and your dog is a bit reactive to dogs normally you know the sensible thing and the responsible thing to do would be to not let, you know not let him off mm-hmm. wouldn't it you know mm-hmm. because he's um you kind of know what's going to happen don't you and I think sometimes when we're trying to exercise our dogs quickly we can you know we can we can trust our dogs a little bit too much and and then they let us down sometimes yeah. you know but obviously it's not as we always say it's not the dog's fault it's it's our fault for doing it in the first place you know and this is something obviously i'm more aware of i think because of the dog adventure business and we have we have obviously lots of responsibility to, to the dogs to keep them safe for the owners but also responsibility to the to, to the you know the general public that our dogs aren't bothering them you know so that's something i, I take uh I take great pride in the fa- hopefully the fact that we don't really bother anybody when we're out and about with the dogs. Mm-hmm. And t- to highlight this for you, we we shot a little video this week when we were out on a dog adventure at one of our favourite beaches. We might even have showed this um, this beach before. We go there often. We do. Um, and so so this this video shall hopefully highlight how even though me and Alex, my son, are out and we're exercising, you know, six, seven, eight dogs at a time, you know, we still. Even when we're at, the, we're at a beach where it's usually quite quiet, we still have to take precautions to, you know, make sure we let the dog off at the right time when we know they're not going to bother anybody else. And before we let the dog off, we make sure that we get them interested in, in the things that we've got so that we can keep good control of them when they're off lead. But anyway, I'll, the video will explain it a lot better. So you just, uh, Alex, it's time to roll the video. Roll it. So how can you be a responsible dog owner? Well, you need to think about your walk before you head off and you need to take a couple of things with you. The first one is poo bags. Yeah, obviously responsible dog owners always pick up the poo. We have poo bags in every pocket of every item of clothing that we own. Even the wedding suits have have poo bags in them. Yeah, so the first thing you need is your poo bags. Second thing is you need some things that your dogs like. Yeah, in this case we have uh, balls. What else do we have, buddy? Strawberries. Strawberries, (laughs) Strawberries, <laughs> yeah. Some of your five a day, we've got them right here. Um, so these are these are toys that the dogs like playing with. Alex, Alex, what's this? Yeah, they know these toys because we play with them all the time. So these are going to enable us to get the dogs interested in us. We also have some Rico tasty, tasty treats. Oh yeah, we got some mixer, some chopped up chicken in there. Mmm, that smells nice, doesn't it? Yeah, so the dogs. They, they, they know that if they know we've got things like like this that they like, then it's going to enable us to to do some to get them to do some stuff, some tricks, and to play with them and to uh, to reward them for doing for, for looking at us and for playing with us and for, for paying attention to us. Yeah, and then the last so we've got our toys and our treats. Yeah, we've also got we've also got us. If we make an effort to make these toys and treats really really interesting for the dogs, then it's going to give us much much more control when we get down on the beach. Yeah, because we're, we're going to make these treats and these toys far more interesting than they actually are. Yeah, we're going to build up the drive of the dogs. Alex here, yay! And we're going to get them, the dogs wanting to play with us so that they really, really, really want to be with us. And the last thing, which I almost forgot, <laughs> which is going to enable you to be a, a really responsible dog owner, is your dog lead. Hey, dog lead gives you loads of control, even if your dog is interested in going to see something else. And the dog lead's going to enable your dog not to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to enable you to have really good control and keep him next to you where you can make sure that he's not going to bother anybody else. We come to a nice quiet beach today where we like coming because there's not normally anybody here. And believe it or not, there's people setting up and having a, a little campsite behind us. So, um, so it's just as well we had all the dogs on lead. Now, when it, we come to let the dogs off lead, We're going to do what we always do, which is to show them the toys and the treats that we have. And we're going to play a couple of games with them to get them interested in us. But we're also, um, we also carry long leads as well. This is a two meter lead, um, but you could have a five meter lead or a 10 meter lead. And if you have that on your dog, um, when you go to let him off, have a bit more off leash time. Yeah, then then that 
it's going to, just going to give you more control. Yeah, so if your dog is a type of dog that is likely to be distracted by, by other dogs, birds, people, whatever it is, yeah, having a long lead on him, a two meter lead, a five meter lead, or a 10 meter lead, whatever you think you need, means you can, you can stand on it before your dog gets a chance to run away and practice that behavior that you don't really want him to do. Yeah, a lot of dog training is about teaching your dog something new to do, something better to do than what he's currently doing, <clears throat> but it's also about stopping your dog from doing the bad thing that you don't want him to do. And a dog lead is by far and away the best invention ever for stopping your dog from doing whatever it is that you don't want him to do. Come on, boys and girls. So you want to be a responsible dog owner, you want to keep your dog safe. Yeah, but in my experience, the time when uh, you know a walk with your dog is likely to go pear shaped is when you first let your dog off lead. Yeah, and then usually the second time is just when you're thinking about putting him back on lead again at the end of the walk. Yeah, whenever we finish the walk and we think, uh, you know, oh, should we let the dogs have another five minutes? Yeah, that's usually when another group of dogs come around the corner or one of the dogs does something stupid, so we tend to put them back on lead a bit quicker. But the, by far and away, the time when your dog, you're going to have least amount of control is when you're first thinking about letting them off lead. So we've we got a, a variety of dogs here. Yeah, we got nice eye contact from some of the dogs. Good boy, Dudley. Good boy, Max. Um, Lily Lou's giving us eye contact. She's going to bark at us in a minute so she can, we can let her off lead. Yeah, some of the other dogs, yeah, they're looking around. They're a bit more interested in birds and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're looking for other stuff. So they, we're not going to let these dogs off until we get some some really good eye contact from them, like what we've got from Maxi Moo today. Good boy, Max. Yeah, Max knows that we've got the treat, the toy in our pockets. And, uh, and, and that's what he's interested in, that's what he wants. Good boy, Max. Yay. So straight away, um, Max enjoyed playing with the ball, and because we've got the ball out, yeah, we're starting to get the attention of the other dogs as well. Alex the point is looking at me now, yeah? Come on, Alex, come on. And the more that I, that I tease him with the ball a little bit, yes, and build up a little bit of drive, then I can get his focus back on me much, much easier. Yeah, there's people coming with dogs now, so we're not gonna let the rest of the dogs off yet. We're gonna wait until these people go past, and that's because I know that these, these our dogs like the water, yeah? So some of the dogs are gonna run down to the water, and if I know that, then I will be very, very silly to let them, let them off leash now when they're gonna go and run off and run in front of somebody else. Yeah, so just being aware of your surroundings. Yeah, you're taller than your dog, so you can see further than your dog. Yes, he has a much better sense of smell, but you can see further than your dog. So be, always be looking around, you know, looking for distractions. Call your dog back, tell him he's a good boy, put him on lead, put him into a sit until the, until the distraction's gone past. Um, especially if it's someone with, with a kitty or something like that, that, you know, is, could be frightened of your dog. Um, and, and, and that's the way that we approach the dog. That's the way I walk the dogs when there's just me and my own dogs. And that's the way we look after seven, eight, nine, ten dogs when we're out on the dog adventures as well. Come on, boys. Come on. <laughs> so it's nice and quiet now, yeah. The distractions pass by. We've walked quite a way down now. We've only got a couple of dogs off lead, yeah, but we're not bothered about that because we're more interested in, in being responsible dog owners, yeah? yeah. We want to... No. The worst thing you could possibly do is just go straight to the beach, open the car door, and let your dog just blast out and go and, go and do whatever he wants, which is more than likely going to involve annoying somebody else, yeah? This is, this is what it takes, yeah? If it means that you have to keep your dog on leash longer, and play some games with him. Yeah, get him to do some tricks or something like that. Alex, here. Yeah, get him to do some things for you. Good no, boy. No. That's a good lad. No. Yeah, then that's fine, you know. The dog doesn't need to have off-leash exercise all the time. So now we're gonna give the dogs uh, some off-leash exercise, yeah? And we're gonna head straight down the beach because it's very hot. Good boy. And we want the dogs to be nice and cool and they can all have a nice swim.
So there we go. That was us on a trip to the beach, trying to be responsible. <laughs> do you think we succeeded, Alex? I think you did, yes. I think <laughs> yeah. you're pretty damn responsible dog walkers. Well, we try to be. We try to be, yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Is it, do you... Well, the thing I was I was thinking when, when watching and filming that video was that uh, as a dog business, obviously you've got... It's not just like you're a typical dog owner with one or two dogs. You've got eight dogs to, to yep. walk as a maximum. And when it comes to getting to the park or the beach or wherever it is... And it's time to, you know, you're you're kind of ready to let the dogs off. You don't just let them all off at once because I imagine that would be a bit chaotic potentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, But it struck me that you know the dogs' personalities and what they react to and, you know, what what kind of mood they're in that day, I guess, as well. And if they've been, like, getting excited on the way there. So Mm. if that was the case, you know, you might keep one on lead for a bit longer. We often do, yeah. Yeah, uh Yeah. just so that the walk goes much smoother and the dogs have a better time you have a better time that's it's right that's right yeah yeah definitely and maybe maybe the people watching can start obviously it should be you would think it should be a bit easier these are eight dogs out that, that aren't our dogs you know although we do work with them every day and walk them every day um but if you you know you might have one dog or if even if you've got a couple of dogs you know you should know those dogs really really well and and so you know i think if you if you set out maybe the homework this week could be if you if you set out for your walk tomorrow with the sole intention of, you know, you're going to try and avoid anything that, that, that makes your dog kick off mm-hmm. or anything where it's not going to be safe for your dog. And you'll probably find, I would think, that that you'll enjoy the walk a lot more, you know, because it'll be a, a, lot, uh, mm-hmm. a lot less stressful. And much like Bruce Lee with the art of fighting without fighting, you know, this is kind of training without actually doing any training, you know what I mean? You're not... You're not necessarily training your dog to do anything specific, but what you're doing is you're not allowing him to practice doing a, a bad behaviour yeah. that that you know upsets him and upsets you as well. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's all about so, knowing your dog. Knowing your dog, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And and if you want a better way to to get to know your dog a bit more, Alex, good point. You could uh, get yourself a copy of How to Be Your Dog Superhero, because this book I have written, and. The 50 reviews on Amazon will tell you that this dog, this book will help you have more fun with your dog. Yeah, it'll help you get more connected with your dog, understand your dog a lot more so you can have more fun with him. And there's dog trainers and lots of other d- dog owners who, who've written reviews as well. So um, the, the books, it's getting get a lot of positive feedback, you know. So if you haven't got a copy, get yourself a copy of How to Be a Dog Superhero because you will have more fun with your dog once you've read it and implemented what's in it. Um, so that's, I think that's a wrap for this week's episode. Thank you, Alex, again. And next week, we're going to be talking to a very good friend of mine, Rachel Bean, who is a veterinary registered vet nurse. I can't remember. I always get that wrong. Um, But Rachel, um, she often comes up and does uh, canine uh, first aid workshops for us up here. Um, She's super knowledgeable. She's also a dog behaviorist as well. And yeah, she's so Rachel's going to come up. We're going to shoot an interview in the house. We're going to move inside. And yeah, she, she's going to be t- teaching us some stuff about, um, you know, things that we can look out for to, to you know, b- better keep our dogs in good health, really. You know what I mean? Some good basic tips. She's, she's, she's super, super knowledgeable. Good and stuff to know. And I just thought it'd be a different, a different angle to come from from the behaviour. Maybe we'll mix it up a little bit. Anybody has any suggestions for any, anybody else? Any guests you want to see on the show? Then, you know, let me know at dom at packleaderdogadventures.co.uk. Um, but that's, uh, that's it for today. It's a wrap. And if we don't see you through the week, we'll see you through the window. Yeah.